Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC, uh, whatever it's called, or Fight Night or something. I think it's coming from Vegas. Uh, we're going to have 12 fights, and as usual, we're going to do three separate videos. One, we are going to go over the DFS slate, where we go over the best plays, and that's this video. Then, probably tomorrow, we're going to do a betting breakdown, where we just kind of take a contrarian look to some of the fights. And then we're going to try to do a, uh, a a lineup construction video. I can't promise I'll be able to do it because it's uh, Yom Kippur on Saturday. Um, and we'll just see how how grumpy I am because I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be fasting. But if I uh, can if I have it in me, I will do the uh, lineup construction video. The very least, we will have the DFS preview today and a lineup construction video tomorrow. Excuse me, a uh, betting breakdown tomorrow. Maybe I can get the lineup construction video done tomorrow as well. It depends on on when I can do my projections and when the Sims go up on Saber Sim and things like that. Okay, but I guess we'll touch on lineup construction a little bit in this uh, in this video. So we're gonna have it looks like um, what twelve fights and twelve fights is you know it's a decent number it's not the best with respect to uh being able to get unique but it's certainly you know hey better than 11 and the tafa barnett fight that was uh canceled but at least they gave tafa a replacement um i wonder if they gave his opponent a price yet it does not look like it um but tafa does have an opponent he's going to be fighting um Sean Sharaf, and at the very least, we do have uh, odds on it. And fortunately, the uh, the odds on this fight are very close to what the odds were going to be on the Barnett fight. Maybe Tafa's a little bit less of a favorite than he would have been over Bar over Barnett. And quite honestly, I'm I guess I'm sort of glad that they uh, postponed this fight because I probably would have had a ton of Barnett. Uh, in that fight and probably would have lost. So uh, nonetheless, we are going to go with 12 fights. Main event, really, really good main event between Tetsuro Tyra against Brandon Royval. And uh, we'll talk about this more in the betting breakdown, I guess. But uh, at this point, I don't think I've seen a single tout uh, recommend Tyra. I think Royval very well could be the most popular underdog uh, since I've been following MMA. And yet still, Tyra's minus 300. Uh, so that is what it is. We'll talk about that when we get there. So just to review again, this is for people that have not seen this before. I mean, what you're looking for in these fights are your fighters with either uh, a lot of finishing upside or a lot of grappling upside, because that's the way you score points in DraftKings, either by uh, finishing a guy early or by taking them down a lot because, you know, takedowns and control time rack up points as well. You can also rack up points with, with, with pure volume, but it's, it's very, very rare to be able to do it just on volume. All right. So that's what we're looking for. Let's go fight by fight. Clayton Carpenter against Lucas Ro Roja. So first let's take a look and make sure there's no money line uh, uh, abnormality here. Carpenter is a minus 200 favorite and he's being priced accordingly. So there's no money line value here. So we're looking at whether Carpenter, we always look at the favorite first has, you know, either a good finishing line or a good takedown upside. So Clayton Carpenter, let's look at his inside the distance line. Carpenter inside is plus 225. And for his price, that's an extremely poor um, inside the distance line. What's what's remarkable actually is that Roca, his inside the distance line is just about the same as Carpenter's, um, and that's because you know Roca's path to victory is more getting the, getting the KO, where Carpenter's main path to victory is is using his grappling um, to pro hopefully for him you know secure a decision. So I think both these fighters are very, very playable in DFS. Carpenter because of his his takedown and grappling upside. And Roca just because it's very, very sharp inside the distance line. 
So right off the bat, I mean, I think you're probably going to want to get exposure to both these fighters, uh, specifically the Roka. I didn't even look into any of his, you know, tape or anything like that, but the numbers are what they are. And this is a very, very strong inside the distance line for a $7,400 fighter. So I would play both of these guys. Cody Haddon versus Dan Argetta. Haddon at 8,700. You'd expect him to likewise be about a, be about a two-to-one favorite. Um, let's take a look at that. Mm, not, I mean, not quite. I mean, he's, let, let's compare these a second. So these last two fights have similar DraftKings odds or pricing, but here Cody Hand is only minus 182. So that's not exactly the greatest. Argetta actually probably has a little bit of money line value here at 7,500. Um, in addition to that, Argetta, his path to victory is extremely DraftKings friendly. I mean, he's he pushes a very high pace, and he's goes for takedowns nonstop. So, I think Argetta is an extremely, extremely strong DFS play here. So let's uh, let's. I know I promised I'd usually start with the favorites, but this is a, this is very, very sharp. Let's look at Haddon. Uh, let's see his. His inside the distance line plus one sixty. I mean, at his price, it's it's fine. I mean, I'll consider it a fine play, but certainly nothing great. And I'd like to think you're going to get better inside the distance lines from other fighters later. So this is kind of uh, kind of awesome. I mean, right off the bat, you know, two fights, two dogs as as pretty strong plays. Um, and if that if that's not good enough, I mean, well. I guess we'll look at Tafa Barnett first. I think that's going to be the next fight in there. It's not Tafa Barnett. It's going to be Tafa versus uh, what I guess Sharaf. Now, unfortunately, we do not have an inside the distance line yet. Although we we see that the under one and a half is minus three twenty five. So I imagine you're going to see a very strong inside the distance line for Junior Tafa, maybe minus one fifty at, at at least. So uh, Tafa is going to look like a strong play. He's 9,400, so he's tough to get to. But I, I don't know. I mean, on a card like this, if he gets first-round KO, like something like this, 104, what does that look like? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just – I'm probably just not going to play him. Uh I'd be interested in knowing this other guy because I'm telling you, I, I happen to think Tafa kind of stinks. Um, that's that's a highly analytical term. Now, I know he's 9,400. I know he's, his money line suggests that he's pretty good, but he has one win. You know what I mean? He lost to Muhammad Usman, who's, who's atrocious. And then, okay, he beat Parker Porter. Great. And then he got, he got obliterated by Rogerio de Lima. He put up six fantasy points in the process in two rounds. And then he lost to, to that, that, that Walker character in, in like two seconds. Um, I almost want to want to play the other guy's side unseen, uh, but I guess we can't do that. Um, he's going to get a price of probably 7K flat, I would imagine. So... I promise you I'm going to probably play some of them. Uh, that's just the way it's going to be. So look at this. One, two, three fights in a row. We have three three underdog shots. Yikes. All right. Um, <laughs> and then we have another one. So Corey McKenna versus Julia Palastri. Uh, women fights usually don't have great inside the distance lines, but they do sometimes have the ability to put up good volume. And obviously, there's always the possibility that one of them, one of them has good takedown upside, and this one's no exception. You have. We'll look at the inside the distance lines first. We have where are they? Where is McKenna? I mean, inside the distance line, nobody's great. I mean, plus three hundred, plus a thousand, whatever. But I'll tell you, McKenna is a really, really good wrestler. You know, and and so if she wins. I mean, she's going to score. 
I mean, I think this is extremely strong underdog play here. Unless there's something wrong with the money line somehow. No, I mean, I don't know. It makes sense to me. I, I prefer, prefer her to the uh, to the favorite in this spot. All right. Uh, it's the express bet. All right, moving on. Themba Garimbo versus Nico Price. All right, so I imagine this is going to look like a pretty good play um, on the favorite. Garimbo at 9,200. I presume is inside the discipline. It's going to be probably minus 120. Let's just take a look. Uh, not that great. So plus 110. So not great, but he also has takedown upside um, and control time and all of that stuff. So I think that he is a very, very strong favorite. Uh, I think he's a better favorite than Junior Taffa. And uh, yeah, Nico Price, on the other hand, he doesn't have that same type of, of juice as some of these other underdogs. Let's take a look, though. Let's look at prices inside the distance line. That's nah, like plus 500 and with no takedowns. No thanks. Okay, Pat Sabatini versus Jonathan Pierce. Uh, all right, Jonathan Pierce, minus 185. I presume he's going to be again about 8,800. Whoa. Jonathan Pierce is only 8,200? All right, Jonathan Pierce here is going to be the most popular fighter on the slate. That's not in the main event, and maybe if so. That's kind of nuts. The 8,200 for a minus 180, plus he's got a lot of takedown upside. So this is the fight you're going to have to play. Uh, and 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 not only you have to play the Pierce side, you're going to have to play the Sabatini side because if, in fact, Pierce is going to look so good from a money line perspective and become very popular with the optimizers, then Sabatini is going to get very natural leverage against that. So uh, you're going to have to play Sabatini regardless, and not to mention the fact that Sabatini has takedown upside of his own. So I think this fight is... I mean, I think you really have to go all in on this. I, I don't know how you avoid it. I mean, how does either of these fighters win without without score? You know, so this is, uh, I think this one you should probably go in, all in on. Probably the main event. We'll get there in a minute. But I don't know what they were thinking about this, this DraftKings pricing. Maybe there's this big money line movement. Had to be. Let's take a look, actually. Let's see. Um. Let's take a look. Uh, where'd they go? Can you can you take a look at the at the at the tracking of it? Probably, right? Let's see. Um, yeah, it just all happened in the last like couple of days. So that's a, a kind of unfortunate. But Pierce is going to be just like wickedly popular. All right, uh, let's move on. We're using DraftKings. We're not using going from the fight odds as far as doing the analysis. Uh, Timurov is uh, Ramazan Timurov versus CJ Vergara, 9,100, 7,100. So we better have a minus 110 inside the distance line on Timurov. I think we do. Let's see. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, pretty sharp. I mean, minus... Whoa, no, not at all, actually. So Temurov is actually plus 200 inside. So this is actually quite a poor play. Um, unless, you know, there's all kinds of submissions, which I don't see, you know, with a lot of takedowns. He's just kind of a striker. So this is it's probably a pass. Um, so I think a pass on both sides of this. Chidi and Jaquani versus Jared Gooden. This has got to be an atrocious fight, but let's 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 see what this is. And Jaquani minus one seventy versus plus one forty five. Any money line value there? Um, where is he? Eighty six hundred, seventy six hundred seems reasonable enough. Anybody here possibly have an inside a distance line worth play? I, I imagine no, but let's just see. Okay, they're. Enjiquani plus 140. All right. All right. That's that's not terrible. At 8,600. How is this happening? How is he actually going to? He's terrible. Now, listen to me. I'm Listen to the way I'm talking. And now I'm talking like, like, a, like a square, like MMA better and not like a DFS player. I'm like actually worried that the guy's terrible. Like the, the money line is not factoring in. I got to slap myself. Get me out of that. He's 8,600. He's plus 140 inside. He's just a good play. Yikes. Any chance I play him before Pierce? No. 
Well, sure. I'll play him with Sabatini or something like that. But this fight is just much better. And Gooden, just no big deal. I, I, I don't think. I mean, no grappling, plus 210 inside. Plus 210 inside, is that good? At 7,600? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Ugh, I really have to play this fight? That's that's rather unfortunate. Josh Fremd versus Abdul Razak Hassan. Uh, I presume that Abdul Razak Hassan is going to look really good here on DK. Uh, he's 8,400, and I, I'm guessing his inside the distance line is going to be minus 110. Let's see. Uh, yep, pretty close. Yeah, this is a, this is a sort of a theoretical lock. I mean, he, like he's so much of a better play than San Jaquani. Um, and because of that, for those of you've been following along, you know, and, and the the stream, because Al Razak Hassan looks like such a lock as far as the metrics go. You're just going to have to play Fram down the other side because you're going to get such incredible leverage against what's going to be a very popular fighter. So uh, both of these guys, al Hassan and Fram, both are going to be very, very playable. Boy, this this card is becoming like impossible, like really, really quickly. We're going to have to find fades here. Okay, here's one. Daniel Rodriguez versus Alex Morona. There's no way that we're going to be able to play either of these guys, right? Let's look at the inside the distance lines here. Plus 215 for D-Rod. Omarono, well, plus 375, no. But D-Rod at 8,900, plus 215, X. All right, fine. We finally found a fight we can X. X, D-Rod, X, Morono. Um. Okay, we only have a couple of more, right? We we already did the, the good in... And Jaquani fight. We just have two more. So uh Iron Turtle, Jun Young Park versus um Brad Tavares. Looks like just it's gonna turn into a big striking battle. I mean, Park could go for takedowns, but Tavares's takedown defense is so strong that, that I just feel it's gonna end up in just kind of a striking battle. So in that case, I mean we're just looking at the inside the distance line. I just can't imagine that Park is going to be better than maybe plus 250 right inside. Let's take a look. Yeah, there it is, plus 250. So probably not not probably another fight that we're going to fade here. So okay, that's not terrible. Um couple of fade fights. All right, so Tyra Royval, I mean, okay, Royval is going to be a, a very popular underdog, but for good reason. I mean, he's 7200 in a five-round fight that's going to be extremely active with a lot of takedowns, reversals and volume and all kinds of stuff and Royval Roy Vile is great cardio. I mean it's just he's gonna look really, really strong. And I think he's actually gonna be more popular than Tyra. Uh Tyra inside is probably minus I would say minus one ten, I would guess. Let's see. Tyra inside, yeah about that minus one ten. He's got five rounds to work with, so you, he can get some takedowns and some control time over five rounds. Uh, that works. But the, the thing is, is that Tyra in his wins is not necessarily going to be optimal, where I find it hard to believe that Roy Val in his wins are not going to be optimal. So we, we've, got a, we've got a big problem here, and then we've got several, like, extremely strong underdogs here from a DFS perspective. Roca, Argetta, McKenna, Roy Val, Fremd as as a, a leverage against Al Hassan and either Pierce or Sabatini, whatever. Um well Pierce, but Sabatini would call him an underdog, I suppose. Um so all these guys and gals are extremely strong plays. So it's going to be one of those cards where you want to play as many lineups as you can because you want to get as many combinations as you can with these very strong underdogs. Um, and I guess that's going to be it, right? Um, we're going to do a lineup construction video. Excuse me, a, uh, it did it again. 
a betting breakdown probably tomorrow. And if we can get to a lineup construction video, that's great too. Um, maybe we get to it tomorrow. Got a better chance of doing it tomorrow, I think, than Saturday. Uh, again, let's, one, once more time, just to also review some, some other takes here. Tafa, I'm inclined to fade. Carpenter, oh, I, I don't know if he can get there for me anymore. I guess he, I guess he's still good. Haddon, I'm not going to get there. Palacio, I'm not going to get there. Price, I'm not going to get there. I would say, guys, you could fade here. Vergara, no. This this whole Tamara Vergara fight, no. This whole Morono Rodriguez fight, no. Oh, Dawson, here's the one I forgot. Sorry about this, guys. Ooh, glad I brought. The, glad I remember it. So Grant Dawson, ninety five hundred. Uh, he is going to be a very difficult guy to pay off because, yes, he has a lot of takedowns. Look at his inside the distance line doesn't exist, right? It's plus 250. And he's probably going to get a lot of takedowns and control time. But the thing is, he doesn't really do much with his takedowns. So even if he gets them and he gets them sort of at will, maybe he gets 100, 110. But he doesn't have that, say, 130-point upside that the real heavy-duty grapplers with a lot of you know ground and pound can get. So I think that Dawson is probably – I mean, he's fine. You want to know why he's fine? He's fine because of all these other underdogs. I mean, you could play – you know, do what you want, right? You could play uh, – what's his name? Like Dawson at will here. You know, you could play him. You could also play him with another any other big underdog if you want. You can play him with, I don't know, you pick it. I mean, whatever you want. Play him with Garimbo. And still have 1200 left to spend. That's that's how powerful these underdog plays are. I mean, you don't have to worry about even the price of Dawson. You'll take the 100 you know? Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for today. Um, look for further videos in the next couple of days. And until then, this is Sheets signing off. That'll do it.